Hello everyone, welcome to a new session on Pila Globosa. This presentation it brings to you the detail on the digestive system. So in the coming presentations, um, we will be discussing on the alimentary canal, the structure, and uh, then the digestive gland and the process of digestion. Okay. Uh, regarding the digestive system, uh, it is composed of alimentary canal and associated digestive glands. The alimentary canal of the pila, you can see here, it is a coiled tube, right? Uh, it extends from the mouth and it terminates in the anus over here. And during this, it gets, uh, because of the torsion of the visceral mass, the alimentary canal, it is almost like a U-shaped tube. You can see here, over here, it is also distorted. Okay, it's not a, a straight uh, chain, I mean straight uh, tube. But instead, due to the tor torsion of the visceral mass, you can see the, uh, the digestive alimentary canal also show a distortion. Okay, this is how it is uh, placed. Okay, so here it is the uh, buccal cavity, esophagus, and then the stomach region, it gets deflected and bent over here. And then the intestine is brought again forward. Right? This is how it, it is actually placed. It is its anterior part is uh, uh, modified also. The entire alimentary canal it can be divided into three regions. Uh, that is, uh, you have the foregut region, the midgut region, and the uh, hindgut region. Okay, the foregut it is otherwise referred as a stomodium, the midgut the mesodium, and the, the hindgut the proctodium. The stomodium it includes the buccal cavity and the buccal mass, uh, and the esophagus right the mesodium or the midgut includes the stomach and the intestine proctodium it consists of rectum okay so if you will look into in detail each of the structure so you can see that the till here okay this is a buccal mass so from here over here it forms the foregut region okay so till this portion actually okay till this portion it is the foregut right and this one, it, it forms the, the midgut region, okay, the stomach as well as the intestine. The rectum, it forms the last part that is the hindgut, okay. So, we'll see the structure. The buccal cavity, it is actually the chamber into which the mouth opens, okay. So, this is actually the buccal cavity. Uh, and you can see here it is lined by cuticle internal lining the stomodium as well as proctodium they are unique in having the internal lining of cuticle right uh, while mesodium doesn't have that okay so the internal lining of uh, the uh, buccal cavity it is also lined by cuticle and it is surrounded by large uh, thick walled highly muscular structure which is referred as a buccal mass okay so the buccal cavity it is surrounded by the buccal mass which is almost like a pear shaped structure okay here this shows a, a vertical longitudinal section of the uh, what you call buccal mass and this is how it looks like right uh, it, the buccal cavity uh, the buccal mass it is provided with plenty of uh, muscles several sets of muscles actually for the movement of the buccal cavity as well as the movement of the a radula. Radula is a unique structure associated with the buccal cavity of the mollusk. Okay, so here you can see several sets of muscles. If you uh, look into the different musculature uh, associated with buccal cavity, you can see here they have a median uh, dorsal, uh, then three pairs of anterior dorsal lateral muscles. Okay, anterior dorsal lateral muscles over here. Uh, one two and three over here okay three sets of uh, three pairs sorry three pairs of anterior dorsolateral uh, muscles and two pairs of uh, posterior dorsolateral muscles over here okay uh, then we have in uh, here it, uh, we can see is the three anterior muscles and a pair of long lateroventral muscles uh, so all these muscles they are mainly concerned with the movement of the buccal cavity as well as the movement of the radula okay now the buccal cavity it can be different so, so here this is actually the buccal mass okay the whole buccal mass now this particular area through which the foot passes it is the buccal cavity and the buccal cavity it can it is differentiated into an anterior smaller 
tubular part and this is referred as the vestibule this part is known as the vestibule okay and a posterior portion this part is the posterior portion the uh, in the case the posterior um, part of the um, what do you call the vestibule over here this is the vestibule the posterior part of the vestibule it is uh, provided with a pair of thickened jaws you can see here this is the jaws and they are dorsolateral in position so dorsolateral means this is the dorsal side and on either side uh, uh, one of the pairs of the jaws it is placed okay so these are the cuticular in nature they are placed in the on the along the what you call the posterior part of the vestibule right and these are connected to uh, connected by a thin cuticular membrane that uh, the pairs uh, it is actually um, uh, the um, what do you call it? it is connected by a uh, cuticular membrane okay and the anterior cutting edge of each jaw it is serrated just like a saw and it bears numerous small uh, like uh, what do you call tooth like processes on the anterior side okay and the wall of the vestibule it is provided with um, muscle fibers and this you can see over here uh, it is it forms the sphincter muscles okay so what is sphincter actually it a sphincter it is almost like valvular right so sphincter muscles it is responsible for the uh, opening and closing of the mouth and it also uh, regulates the jaws at the time of feeding okay so you can see what are the structures associated with vestibule okay the buccal cavity as such it is divided into two regions a smaller anterior one uh, it is the what you call the vestibule and then we have the posterior part the vestibule part it is associated with uh, sphincter muscles then uh, the uh, the vestib the posterior part of the vestibule you can see a pair of jaws the which are dorsal laterally positioned one on each side and these are connected interconnected by way of thin cuticular membrane okay the sphincter muscles associated with the vestibule of the buccal cavity it is uh, uh, what you call it regulates the opening and uh, the closing of the mouth okay coming to the posterior part of the buccal cavity uh, here you can see a very prominent structure and that is the odontophore so the whole structure over here it is known as the odontophore and uh, it is found in the posterior part of the buccal cavity and uh, uh, this is actually formed by the raising of the floor of the buccal cavity so the this is the floor of the buccal cavity and the floor of the buccal cavity it is raised into a thick muscular structure and this is what is known as the odontophore okay it is known as a right odontophore okay now this odontophore uh, it is uh, like uh, supported by uh, sets of uh, cartilages one of the prominent cartilage it is the uh, the lateral uh, cartilage you can see here the s shaped almost s shaped lateral cartilage uh, it actually uh, uh, supports the whole structure okay apart from this there is a superior cartilage as well a pair of um, uh, what you call triangular superior cartilage can also be seen which will uh, you can see here in this figure the superior cartilage okay almost triangular uh, and this cartilage it helps in okay the superior cartilage and the lateral cartilages uh, they actually support the whole structure of the uh, what you call the uh, odontophore okay now uh, anteriorly the odontophore here over here you can see the subradular organ along the uh, what you call anterior okay so anteriorly the odontophore forms a small process it is known as a subradular organ and uh, um, the uh, this uh, wait oh yeah the subradular organ it you can see it, it forms a roof to the this part over here it is known as a sublingual cavity okay so this is about the um, odontophore coming to the next part in the buccal cavity it is the radula over here you can see the radula uh, the buccal cavity it contains if you see the structure this is how it will be like okay very long ribbon like chitinous curved it, you can see it is curved right and this is known as the radula uh, or it is known as a lingual ribbon because it is long and ribbon like it is known as a lingual ribbon okay uh, it's anterior end over here you can see it runs longitudinally over the summit of the odontophore this is odontophore right so this is the summit and the anterior part of the radula it runs over the uh, summit of the odontophore while it's posterior end this is the posterior end and it is placed in 
a wide radular sac. So this is the radular sac you can see over here and it is placed in the radular sac. Uh, you can see it is slightly bent behind and it is placed below the uh, uh, buccal mass. Okay. The radula, uh, it is pro, uh, pro, um, like formed by the secretion of the epithelial lining of the radula sac. The epithelial lining of the radula sac, it is responsible for the secretion and formation of the radula. And below the radula, you can see a radular, sorry, what do you call um, the subradular membrane. And this, yeah, this is the subradular membrane over here. Okay, so it uh, this subradular membrane, it is delicate, elastic, and it supports the uh, radula okay the dorsal surface of the radula you can see here that it is this, this is the dorsal part which is visible the dorsal surface it bears teeth which are arranged in transverse rows so these are the transverse rows each row if you look into this is how the teeth is arranged okay so each row contains seven teeth one it is the median or the central it is rachidian we call it as okay then uh, one lateral on either side and two marginals on either side so if you look into the what you call dental formula if you say okay or the form the teeth formula on the radula we can say it is two marginal one lateral one median one lateral again and two marginal so it is two one 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 two okay so that is how uh, the uh, the formula it is okay uh, this radula it is moved uh, forward and backward over the odontophore okay odontophore it is supported by cartilage structure isn't it so when it is moved over the uh, what you call the odontophore what happens is this helps in rasping the food particles okay and these movements it is brought about with the help of muscles the protractor and retractor muscles so what happens is regular use of this radula that is the back and forth movement over the odontophore this will result in wearing off of the anterior end this part okay the anterior end of the radula and but if it is kept on lo losing what happens is the radula size may decrease so to avoid that this the loss from the anterior part it is made made up by the addition uh, regular addition of the radula material from the posterior end what structure pro actually produces it it is a radula sac the epithelial lining of the radula sac it secretes the radula and it makes up for the loss from the anterior part okay so this is about the buccal mass now coming to the uh, esophagus that is the next part we have okay so here the, you can see this is the esophagus the esophagus it is a narrow it is a long uh, tube uh, which emerges dorsally from the you can see here this is the buccal mass so it ar arises from the dorsal part okay uh, and uh, uh, it runs uh, short distance and then it turns to left and enters the visceral mass over here you can see all these okay so this is the head region and this is the esophagus and you can see this part is the esophagus and uh, this is in the visceral mass area okay and then uh, the esophagus uh, later it joins the opens into the stomach now coming to the stomach we can see the stomach lies in the uh, on the left side of the visceral mass over here you can see it is on the left side is right okay uh, uh, here yeah it is on the left side of the visceral mass and it uh, here you can see its cavity is u shaped here you can see this is a stomach region okay so its cavity is u shaped uh, and it can be differentiated into uh, cardiac chamber and the pyloric chamber okay the cardiac chamber it receives the esophagus and the pyloric chamber it opens into the intestine okay the lining of the stomach you can see it is folded the um, the inner lining it is folded another important feature is that the uh, there is a, a structure a cecum okay a blind pouch a small rounded blind pouch arises from the the outer wall of the uh, what, this this is the pyloric stomach okay from the pyloric stomach and the, at the junction between the two chambers that is the pyloric and the cardiac chamber uh, you can see it opens a duct of the di uh, from the digestive gland so digestive the duct from the digestive gland opens into uh, into the stomach at the junction between the pyloric and the cardiac stomach okay so this is about the stomach region coming to the next part it is the intestine as you can see it is highly coiled long uh, and uh, it runs you can see here it runs backward okay it runs backward and uh, uh, where it makes almost like two or three uh, coils uh, uh, between the gonad in the front and digestive gland behind okay and it opens into the 
rectum. And the rectum is the last part. It forms the uh, what you call proctorium and it opens out into the mantle cavity uh, in, through the anus, very close to the right nuchal lobe. Okay, fine. 